Welcome to a sunny Monet for a very special interview today ahead of this Pirates game against Nottingham. I'm joined by Alan Paver, a player who's been at the Cornish Pirates now for the 12th season. And in that time, he's played obviously with a lot of very good players. And he's now going to select his favourite pirate side from those 12 years. So if we go through the team with Alan, he'll tell us who his favourite players would be, the players he'd want in his ideal side. So Alan, welcome to Pirates TV. Oh, thank you very much, John. Start, Starting in the front row, I told you you could pick yourself, but if you didn't pick yourself, who would you have at loose head prop? I'd, I'd have Dan Seal, without a shadow of a doubt. I know when he was here, he played tight head prop, and he was a very good tight head prop. Then moved over to uh, Bedford, and he actually uh, changed sides as well. So. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to be Dan Seal for so many good reasons. Okay. He's a good mate of yours, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And the person in between you then at Hooker, previously you had Billy Massey when I spoke to you about four years ago, but there's a change. There is a change because for me, now I played with Rob Elloway for a long, long time and he's a completely different player to Billy. You would have both of them in your, in your squad. You would play them sort of depending on who you were playing. Um, so I'd say Rob Alloway. I, I've really got to know him and we had a bit of a prickly start, but now, we're now we're good friends. And what about Dave Ward, who's now playing in the Premiership? <laughs> yeah, it, go, it goes without saying he's probably the most talented player I've ever played with. I mean, full stop, any position. Um, you know, I don't always pick it on uh, ability, you know, but he, he is uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, but he's an absolutely outstanding player and probably where Rob just tipped in is just length of time I've, I've been with him. Yeah. And Taito Prop? Taito Prop, I still go with Nick Adams. Right. You know, uh, Nick Adams is a, a very aggressive uh, man. He knew what he wanted and he, and when he gave his all on that pitch. Again, a very good friend. Well, a lot of these people I speak about today, I'm still in contact with them very frequently. So that, that sways things as well, you yeah. know. And what about in the engine room, then the second row? <laughs> well, let's have a little look here. We've always got to go with the big man, Hino. I, I, I mean, he was a phenomenal player. If you got him in the gym, he was as weak as a kitten. You put him on a field, he was as strong as a bully. He was the big uh, Manibian, um, he was, how can I say that? He was a natural player. He, he could offload the ball. He was a very good scrummager. He didn't look very athletic, but he actually was. He run very strong into contact as well. So it was, uh, it was always a pleasure playing with him. So that's Heino Senecal for one. What about the other one? Oh, it's Will James. Oh, yeah. Again, a very aggressive man. He went on now to really establish himself in the Gloucester squad. So he, he, I know this year he, he's not played as much or featured as much as he has previously, but um, he, he really was a Goliath in his time. And what about today's coach for Nottingham, Martin Hart? Did he feature anywhere? Yeah, you know, I, I had one very good season with, uh, with Argy and he's a very nice man. He's, he's made a fantastic coach. Um, I, if I had a squad, he'd definitely be in there. You know, he, he did so many good things in the Premiership and when he came to us, he was a very good leader and a, and a gentleman as well. I thought about Ben Gulliver as well as a potential. Yeah, talented, very talented. Uh, Again, we didn't see eye to eye at times, uh, but uh, not, not in a bad way. He, he was very competitive and, and, uh, and I was. There's a few little yeah. scuffles now and again. And, <laughs> and so, yeah, he was very talented and you definitely got to take him into consideration. And the back row, I should think there'd be quite a lot of competition for places here. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare, you know, to think about all the players that they had. But I, I have obviously Eva here just looking. Eva for me, was an out and out athlete he were he could break tackles he would get to the ball so quick for breakdown he would be penalized more often than he, he even produced a video once or a dvd for the um for the referees to say you know i think we, you've been a bit little unfair oh, right, yeah he did yeah he was very good it wise yeah. uh, i think we got a man passing us by yep there you go you're not in my squad unfortunately no. <laughs> apologies for that yeah uh, so he'd be open side definitely and i I'm going to go for Chris Morgan for all the reasons everyone sees. He is an absolute titan for us. He, he's playing every every week. Um, he's, he's had some bad injuries. His body's beat up, but he still goes on that pitch. And really, he has been so unfortunate in terms of he was a well, he's still a Premiership player yeah. in all our eyes. Yeah. He just never got maybe the opportunity, or maybe it was the wrong timing. But um, he's, he's very talented and, and a good leader. And someone who did get the opportunity though was Sam Betty. Did he come close? Of course he came yeah, close. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sam Betty, he's, 
he's a tough, tough man. You know, he just goes around wrecking people, yeah. and that is what his what his skill is. You know, another year when he's old enough, he'll make the list. <laughs> yeah. But I've told him not, you know, not until he's uh, <laughs> not until he's aged a little bit more. But um, yeah, he he's a phenomenal player, and I, and he's probably the best seven we've we've produced. He scored his first try in the Premiership at the weekend. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He, that, that's good for him. He, yeah. he doesn't normally interest him running with the ball and no. scoring tries. But uh, that, that's nice for him because, he, he, you know, things have not really worked out there for him as they've not been as successful as they want to be. But he's a very good player and, and, I'm, and I'm sure his career will kick on. So that's Eva Mutasaga and Chris Morgan. What about number eight? Got to be Tim Cowley. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah great player. Yeah, great player. Yeah. I mean, skills. Um, great drinker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that helps him get in the team, does it? <laughs> he does. He does. And uh, interestingly, he started up his uh, wine tours in Bordeaux now. Oh yeah. Right. And I, I often go out to see him, so yeah. we're, we're always in communication with each other. And just he just had so much talent. Um, A recent number eight who impressed me was Blair Cowan. Yeah, and he's done well too. Very well. Yeah. Similar mode. Yeah. Um, you know, skillful, very aggressive, committed the body to to everything. Um, and he's gone. He's playing number seven now, actually, at London right. Irish. He's doing very well. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely a, a close second there for me. So that's a pretty strong pack of forwards, Alan, with a few replacements as well. Yeah. Let's move on to the backs. What about fullback? Fullback. Well, there's been a few fullbacks, but I, I think now it's got to be Rob Cook. You know, we get to see him most weeks, and we're all wondering how's he done it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. <laughs> um, the, that young man who arrived here, he couldn't even do one pull-up, who we laughed at daily, couldn't pass off his left hand, is is now not only cutting it, he's one of the stars of the Premiership. So he's definitely got to be in there. Is that credit to the Pirates then, who've developed him into a, a Premiership player? Yeah, of course, yeah. you know. I, I, I think he had the, the mindset for it, and I, and I think it was a he naturally was going to progress. I, but the environment really challenged him. It sort of ironed out a few of those little. Uh, well, how can I how can I say? He came with one or two blemishes, but he let he left more of a complete player. Yeah, certainly did. What about on the wings? Well, over the years, I've still got to go with Rodri McAtee. You know, he in his day he could set a field alight. You know, he was yeah. very elusive. He was abrasive, um, and yeah, he he was a real pleasure to play with in, in his time. And on the other wing, Richard Weldon, you know, he was he was more of your athlete. He was uh, a guy who could really finish tries. He mm. was big and he was strong. So they complemented each other. Richard Weldon scored five tries at Kenwin, didn't he, against Rotherham? I remember seeing that thinking, wow. Yeah, fantastic. yeah, he was. Yeah. You know, we've, we've had some good wingers in the past. But um, I think he shortly retired after that. Uh, but, but in his day, yeah, he was a phenomenal finisher. And what about in the centres? Well, changed a little bit, yeah. and um, I was actually racking my brain. And the best combination I've ever, ever played with and, and ever seen was uh, Mark Fatialofi and Junior Fatialofi. And Junior used to play 13 then, and Mark used to play 12. They went on. They were a massive, successful uh, combination at Exeter. They were very abrasive, and there was a time where nobody wanted to play against them. Mm, yeah. Because you would get not only run over, you would get blown in the middle of next week through their tackling exactly, as well. Yeah. You know, so as a pair, that was the strongest combination I could uh, come up with. So Junior replaced Duncan Roke. He was a really creative, great centre. Yeah, I saw him the other day actually right. when we went up to Mosley. Yeah, he was. Uh, uh, he initially played wing when he was at Worcester, then he came here, played 13, and he was a real leader. Uh, quite old school in his thinking, but uh, he, he gave us real good direction and good leadership. Talking of direction and leadership, what about your halfbacks? <laughs> yeah, Gav Cattle, I don't need to say any more. No, you know, I don't need to say it. He, he really has been monumental to everything that we've done here. Dickie brought him back. Oh, five years ago, I can't remember now, six years ago, yeah. with a spell away, two years away. Uh, and yeah, he, he is everything what, what we're about. Um, and then he's, he's mate and his buddy, and, and we're actually going to go over and see him at the end of the season, Alberto Di Bernardo. Oh, yeah, right. He's gone on to do fantastic things, playing for your, you know, your country there. He's, he's going to play on for Italy, uh, especially when he, he reached the grand old age of 33, I think it was, when he made his debut. Yeah, yeah, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. You know, and he was a, a real fiery character. He really got stuck in. So for a number 10, he, he could really... Uh, it out 
Yeah, I always remember Phil Western's announcement of him kicking the goals at Campbell and yeah. always yeah. extended it, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, Alberto Di Mimbala. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I, if I get him on the phone, I'll scream that two or three times with him before I even start talking. Yeah, he must be sick of it even now. But all of, all of these men I, I speak about have such great fond memories of being here. We, you know, we talk about the old days a lot. Uh, as I say, I'm in contact with probably most uh, of the boys um, who, who I would have, not only my team, but in my squad. Yeah. So it's a special place here because it bonds you and, and it bonds you for life. You know, some of these players I haven't seen for many, many years, but we, the only thing we talk about is here. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, it's fantastic. That's great. And what about coaches, though, of this fantastic team you're picking? Oh, no, definitely. I, I think... Jim McKay's done marvellous things. You've only you've only got to watch what he's done over the last few years, progressing on then to the international Australian team. Um, and Ian, you know, he's done marvellously well. He's been here now five years. This will be his fifth season, and he's given us real direction. Um, he's been massive, not only for the pack but for what we've done as a team. He's, his coaching, his, his knowledge of every area of the game is pretty phenomenal. Mm. Uh, I know he's a, he's a forward uh, at heart, and that's what he that's what he likes. That's where his heart is. But he he has good knowledge about back three, what wingers are doing. Uh, you know, so there's no escape. No, no. no escape. And Chris Sterling might have been considered. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I think if we had um, if we were allowed the third man to see, yeah. oversee everything, then he you know he definitely would be there. Great organiser. Um, he came at a time where we really needed him, and uh, he, he produced two finals, uh, a cup in the BNI. You know, so yeah, mo most definitely. And it, and again, a gentleman, a really good bloke, and a lot of the boys still keep in contact with him now. So you could have Chris as director of rugby, Jim Mackay for the backs, Ian for the forwards, yeah. Yeah. and Gavin be captain. Of course he was. He was. <laughs> Alan, thank you. That'd be a hell of a side if we could put that on the field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would, it it would, would. be. Yeah. So thank you very much for talking to us about your favourite side. 12 years here at the Pirates as a professional player. That's a great achievement. Over 300 games. So you've played with a lot of these players. You know how good they are. So thank you for putting that together for us. My pleasure, John. Alan Paver talking about his best team ever team that he could put together here for the Cornish Pirates over 12 years. That's a great side that could be put on the field. If only they could play together in a game, that'd be worth watching. Replacements for the Pirates.